Soldiers of the cross. Will you stand up as we pray together? Let's commit ourselves to the Lord that all that the Lord has done through all our ministers, our preachers, our singers, our orchestra, our leaders in various areas and those who have served us, all the service they have rendered to us, wanting also the real soldiers of the cross. Let us pray that their labor will not be upon us in vain. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Our Father, we thank you very much for this uh, gathering together. Thank you for this conference. Thank you for this retreat. Thank you, Lord, because you brought your people together to inject us and impact us with power. Lord, we pray nobody will remain weak at the end of this retreat. In Jesus' name. You have favored us, you have honored us, you have graciously blessed us. I will pray that your blessing will abide forever in every life in Jesus' name. And all the people you have used, those who see and those who don't see, and the people who have held important positions in this retreat and in all the other retreats, that everything went on well, we just pray. You make them come cross over every problem and mountains in their lives and ministries in Jesus' name. And the rest of us too that have listened, that have benefited from what you have given, Lord, we pray we will not lose our victory in Jesus' name. Onward will be marching. Forward will be marching. Upward will be marching. I will pray, Lord, nothing will defeat your people in Jesus' name. Make us militant soldiers. Make us a triumphant church. I will pray, Lord, as we go out of this place today, your power will go with us. The anointing will go with us. The unction will go with us. Every sin the ministers have ministered unto us in preaching and singing, oh Lord, we pray, will be permanent in our lives in Jesus' name. This final thing that comes, Lord, I pray, any weakness that still remains, drive them out in Jesus' name. Lord, we're going back to where we came from, but we're going to possess the land. Every place the soul of our foot shall tread upon, we shall possess in Jesus' name. You will not be defeated. Everywhere you go, the courage of the mighty will be in your heart in Jesus' name. And the conquering spirit of a David and the conquering spirit of a Daniel will be in every one of you, every one of us in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Thank you very much. You can see that we praise the Lord for bringing us to the climax and the conclusion of this retreat. And this time we're talking about militant overcomers in the triumphant church. Two things there. Number one, the overcomers. Number two, the church. And then what kind of overcomers? Militant, triumphant, the people that are moving on and there is nothing of weakness in their hearts, in their lives. And what kind of a church? A triumphant church, a victorious church, a glorious church. And that is what the Lord will make us in Jesus' name. Let's see what the Lord Jesus is saying about the calling he has given us and about the very fact that he doesn't produce weakness. It doesn't produce a weak people, anemic people, impotent people. The blood of Jesus, the prayer of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus, the redemption of Jesus Christ produces in us the strength to live a victorious life, a militant life, a triumphant life. We're looking at Revelation chapter 2. And you see what Jesus Christ said, that at the end of the race, what will matter is that you are an overcomer. You'll be an overcomer. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He's saying that all we have been hearing, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to the churches. And then he says, to him that overcometh, I will give to each of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. To him that overcometh, 
all the promises of God, all the rewards of the Lord, all the commendation of the Lord is not just for every deacon Harry. It's not for every church goer. It's not for the what of bench warmer. It's for the people that overcome. Sin will try to get in again, but you overcome. And self will try to assert itself again, and you overcome. And Satan will try to wage war against you again, but you overcome. And the promise of the final victory. And the promise of the final reward belongs to the people that fight against sin, against self, and against all the corruption of society, and against Satan, and they win. In the private, they win. In the public, they win. At home, they win. In the church, they win. Anywhere they find themselves, they win. We're looking at chapter 2, verse 11. In verse 11, it says to uh, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcometh. That's it. That's what Jesus is looking for. He's not looking for people that have defeated their faces on the ground. They have yielded again to sin, to Satan, to self. He's saying, he that overcometh shall not be hurt in the second death. I'm looking at that same chapter, verse 17. In verse 17, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to each of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth except saving he that receiveth it. You can see over and over the Lord Jesus Christ saying, I'm coming back. And when I come back, I'm going to be looking for the people that overcome. And I pray that you will qualify. That when he comes, you'll be an overcomer. You'll not be overcoming for one whole year, two years, and three years, or ten years. And then the final day, and the final week, and the final month, then you fall, and you do not overcome again. And then the devil takes you. And then the enemies take you, and they take you captive, that you are not able to stand to the very end. I pray that the same courage and conviction and power the Lord has given you today will remain until that final day in Jesus' name. Look at verse 25. It says in verse 25, But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. There's no point just holding fast for one week. Holding fast only one month, on holding fast only when you were a younger Christian, and then when you become an older Christian, an aged Christian, that you just give up because now you are old. It says, Until I come, that which you have, you hold fast. And then it says in verse 26, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him, and I will give him the morning star. You will have it in Jesus' name. He that has an ear, the Lord Jesus is always saying this, he that has an ear, because there are some people who don't have ears to hear they have the, you know, ear outside, you can see your sin. They have ears to hear. It doesn't get into their heart, into their mind. They do not meditate on what they are hearing. And they do not plan on obeying the words they are hearing. That's why Jesus Christ, after speaking about the overcomer, and he says the victory and the reward belongs to the overcomer. He always says, see that as an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The Spirit is saying the same thing to all the churches at the headquarters, in all the branches, and all the regions, in all the states, in all the nations. He's saying the same thing. To be an overcomer is the same. Overcoming sin, the same everywhere. Overcoming self, the same everywhere. Overcoming Satan, the same everywhere. He that has an ear to hear, I have an ear to hear. I said, I have an ear to hear. I will hear and I will respond to the Lord appropriately and you will hear and respond to the Lord appropriately in Jesus name. I'm looking at chapter 3 verse 5 it says he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. And but I will confess his name before my father and before his ages. As you look at that verse, the meaning is this He who does not overcome, I'll blot out his name. The one who overcomes, I will not blot out his name. But the one that goes out of the retreat, I'm saved, I'm born again. 
I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And I have special privilege in the household of faith. But then he goes out. Their temptation comes. He cannot overcome. Women come. He cannot overcome. Men come. He cannot overcome. Money, the temptation to steal. To be fraudulent comes. He cannot overcome. The one that does not overcome. I will blot out his name. Out of the book of life. And I will not confess him before my father as belonging to me. But he that overcomes. Come it. The same shall be closed in white trimmage, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. I'm looking at verse 12. He that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write a, and will write upon him the name of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. I'm looking at verse 21. In verse 21, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I'm set down with my father in his throne. And then the Lord concludes everything by saying, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. That's what the Lord is telling us, as He has already given us that experience of conversion. He has already given us that experience of consecration. He has given us that consummation, and He has given us the feeling of the Holy Ghost, and He puts a desire in our heart, and He puts a passion within us, and He puts a seal within us that we're going out, and we're going to overcome every enemy that tries to raise its ugly head against a Christian conviction in Jesus' name. And we are not going to be defeated. We are not going to be fallen and rising anymore. We are going to keep on standing until the Lord Jesus Christ will come. And when he comes, he will find you standing. I said he will find you standing. Because you are one of those overcomers the Lord is coming for. Not a weak overcomer. Not a kind of so-so overcomer. A militant overcomer. And our church is going to remain a triumphant church in Jesus' name. There are three points we're going to look at. Number one, converted multitudes in a transformed church. A transformed church. That's the kind of church we want. A transformed church. Not just a nominal church. You have a name that you live, but you are dead. Not a nominal church. We're not, we're not a traditional church, you know, as it was, so it will be, and so forever it will be. Traditional church. We're not just an orthodox church that, you know, these are the sacraments, and these are these, and all that. We're not like that. We're a transformed church. And in a transformed church, all the members, anyone that claims to be a member of that church, will be a converted individual, will be a real, real Christian. Who are the Christians? Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verse 26. Acts, chapter 11. We're looking at verse 26. It says, And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves with the church. That's the church. They assembled themselves with the church. Not the people who just came to the retreat, and after the retreat, they say, bye-bye, I'll come again next Easter, I'll come again next uh, December. But the people that assemble with the church, they are born again, they are converted, and the passion of their life, the zeal of their lives, the desire of their lives is to be with the people people of God gathering together every time to study the word of God, to fellowship with the people of God, and to pray with the people of God. It says they assembled themselves of the church and taught much people. They are teachable. They are people that listen to the word of God and receive the word of God, and their heart is transformed by the word of God. And it says, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. When people saw them, they saw the conversion. They saw the change. They saw the transformation. They said, these are little Christ. Look at that one, a little Christ. Look at that one, a little Christ. Look at that one, a little Christ. That's why they call them Christians in that place for the first time. And I pray that that same conversion will be apparent, to be visible in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 
1 Corinthians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't you know that the people that just darken the, uh, the, the threshold of the church, that is, they just come to the church, they are crawling in and crawling out, and they are not born again, they are still unrighteous. Don't you know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be, ye, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of, them, of themselves with mankind. No thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. It says, don't deceive yourself. Don't say, because I'm coming to church and, and you know, I dress like a dress, I remove this, I remove that, but internally, there's no conversion. Don't deceive yourself and say that, well, because of that, you are going to heaven. It says, don't you know that all the righteous people, the people who are like, you know, chameleons, they, 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 they look like this, well, they, they, the midst of the people of God. But when they are outside there, their lives are just like the lives of the unbelievers. It says that that should not be. Then he tells us in verse 11, and such were, not I, not I, this past tense now, and such were some of you. Ye, but ye are washed. That's conversion. He said, you were dirty, but you are washed. You are soiled, but you are washed. You are defiled, but you are washed. There's a change, a transformation that has come upon you. And tell me, when every Christian, every member of the church, when they're all converted, when there's a cleansing, when there's a change and separation from sin, that will be a triumphant church, a transformed church. That's why it says, but ye are washed. But she has sanctified, but she has justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5. I'm just showing you that what matters in the New Testament for a church is a transformed church. Not just a nominal church. Sunday, Sunday we're there. And then Monday we're there. And Thursday we're there. But there's no change. And the Word of God is not making an impact in our lives. The people who come to the Lord, they have ears to hear. And the Word of God is transforming them and changing them. And going from grace to grace and strength to strength and glory to glory. Those are the people that are members of the real church, the triumphant church. And I pray that that will be your Lord in Jesus' name. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8. It says, for ye were sometimes darkness were in the past. That means you are no more the kind of person you used to be. But now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. That is the conversion. Converted multitudes in a transformed church. As many as we are. Might be 500 or might be 1,000 or 100,000. Might be 500,000 or a million. Whatever the multitude. People who are born again. People who have transformed life. People who have a change of life that anywhere they go people can testify about them that there is a change a mighty change that has happened in their lives and that's what jesus said in matthew chapter 8 chapter 18 verse 3 matthew chapter 18 verse 3 he said except that combustion has taken place except that transformation has taken place we are not part of his i will not be able to inherit the kingdom of god matthew chapter 18 verse 3 it says and he said verily i say unto you except ye be converted see that except ye be converted the people are just milling around him coming around him they wanted healing they wanted their blind eyes open they wanted their limb legs to receive strength they wanted their e deaf ears to open they wanted the blind to see they wanted the lepers to be cleansed and then he told them he said yes you can get the healing but except except ye be converted and become as little children who are the little children those are the children i don't know sir teach me I'm teachable. Tell me. You know, the people who are so set in their ways that there's no conversion, there's no change. It says, except you be converted and become as little children, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. Conversion, very important. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 19. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, I'm looking at verse 19 there. It's telling us that the people who are real part of the church, the people who are part and part 
apostle of this a triumphant transformed a militant church that the people who have this change this transformation in their lives it says in acts chapter 3 verse 19 repent ye therefore and be converted repent ye therefore and be converted let there be a turning around let there be a transformation in your life that you'll be able to say i was there i knelt i stood i prayed i called upon the lord and the blood of jesus washed me and cleansed me i am no more the man i used to be i'm no more the woman i used to be i'm no more the boy the girl i used to be things are different now because i repented and believed on the lord jesus christ he changed me he touched my life. He turned me around and he converted me. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Look at verse 26. Unto you first God having raised up his son Jesus sent him to bless you in turning away in turning away in turning away every one of you from his iniquities that's what the lord wants to do he's not interested in just people that come to church that are carry big bibles about and then their lives have not changed they're in the offices they're still fraudulent they're still stealing they're part of the corruption that you know the papers are reporting and talking about when you investigate them you find that you know they're, they're rotting in their lives it reminds me of the story of a particular man that you know he, he went to buy some fish in a particular store and then they gave him a carton of fish and when they gave him the carton of uh, they thought they gave him a carton of fish but actually all the money they had due that day of sales all the money was in the carton instead of taking the carton of fish they gave him the carton of money and then they put him in the boat of his car and then he went uh, back home and when he got back home he saw the carton of uh, money and he said what is this this is a terrible mistake these people have made and then he drove his car back there and uh, said uh, well it looks like you made a mistake look at the carton you gave me carton of money when they opened it, he said ah, ah people like this are still in this uh, country and he said let us take your photograph and we're going to blow this up so that we can have people like you he said no no don't you do that he said why he said well to tell you the real truth this woman with me is not my wife if you take my photograph and you see although i am faithful in handling money i'm not faithful in handling women think about that think about that the people who are rotting on one side but on the other side they appear clean they appear militant they appear all right and you think that they are right. but the salvation that god gives us is what touches every part of life not just that you're able to return the curtain of money because you are faithful in that area but then you are messing up your life with somebody who is not your wife somebody is not your husband if there is a change if there is a transformation it's a total transformation that affects every area of your life and those are the members that the lord is looking for when is coming the people who are combated among the multitudes and they become part of the triumphant church that jesus christ comes to turn you every one of you away from your sins that's why it says in second corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Open your Bible. I'm reading there in verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, any man, where is that man? Where is that woman? We are, we will be in Jesus' name. Now here is the characteristic of your life. If it is really true that you are in Christ, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, tell me the rest. All things have become all, all, everything, all things have become new. The blood of Jesus will wash you whiter than snow. And before you leave this place today, any remnant of sin, any remnant of dishonesty, any remnant of hypocrisy still remaining, the Lord will wash and cleanse everything in Jesus' name. Then you'll be able to say, now therefore, I am a new creature in Christ. All things in my life, they have passed away. And behold, in my life, all things. I become new. I pray that will be your Lord in Jesus' name. I come to point number two now, and it's consecrated members in a translatable church. I'm talking about consecrated members in a translatable church. That means the Lord is going to translate the church. He's going to take the church out of this place, and he's going to take them to heaven in the rapture. There are some churches that are not translatable. That is, the Lord cannot translate them. The Lord cannot take 
take them to heaven like we took Enoch to heaven. But a translatable church, a church that when Christ comes, when the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ, not just the dead, not the dead in sin, the dead in Christ, they shall rise up. And we which are alive, alive in righteousness, alive with sanctification, alive with holiness. It says those who are alive, alive in the Lord, they'll be caught up together with them, translated and taken to heaven. That kind of translatable church, you are part of that. And if you are part of that, you must be a consecrated member of the church. Consecrated members in a translatable church. First Corinthians chapter 15. In First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, it says, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Give me a good amen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. You must have been saved before that time. There will be no time to repent when Jesus Christ comes. Because it will happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. There will be no time to make restitution when Jesus comes. If there's going to be any restitution, it is now. There's no time to pray for holiness and sanctification at the time when Jesus Christ will come. Because he will come and it says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Then it says, in that place like uh, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and then it says, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we, those of us who are still alive, alive in holiness, alive in righteousness, alive in sanctification, alive in separation from the world, it says, and we shall be changed. You'll be there in Jesus' name. That's why it says in verse 58, therefore my beloved brethren, those who want to express that rapture, therefore my beloved brethren, those who want to be part of that mystery that will take Please, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work and in the word of the Lord. For as much as you know that your neighbor is not in vain in the Lord, the rapture is going to happen any time from now, and I pray you will be there. And I pray I will be there. And I pray we shall all be there in Jesus' name. What if the rapture happens and you're not there? What if the rapture happens? You know, you have been healed, you have been delivered, you have been blessed, you have money, you have wife, you have children, you have husband, you have everything that we can talk about. Name it and claim it. You've claimed everything. And what if the rapture then happens and then you are not eventually there? What will happen? I'm looking at First Corinthians there. In First Corinthians, it's in chapter 15. It says that in verse, in verse 19, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, if in this world, only in this life only we have hope in Christ we are of all men the most miserable if you're part of this church and then you have all the privileges you have all the opportunities and people honor you brother so and so sister so and so pastor so and so whatever leader so and so or they call you overseer so and so bishop so and so whatever they call you and it's only in this life and then the rapture takes place and there's hidden sin there's a sin you're hiding and you are committing that sin over and over and over. You come to the retreat, you see, go back and commit that sin. And then people don't know because of that, they respect you. You are the, you know, the number one, you are the number two, whatever. In your district, in your group, in your state, in your region. And yet you are not living a victorious life. And then eventually the rapture takes place, if only in this life. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, will be of all men the most miserable. I pray that will not be your Lord. I'm looking at First Thessalonians chapter one verses nine and ten. First Thessalonians chapter one. First Thessalonians chapter one verses nine and ten. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we urge unto you, and how ye have turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God, and to wait for His son from heaven. We're waiting for a son from heaven. And because of that, when a waiting spirit, waiting attitude, you wake up in the morning, Lord, I don't know, you might come today, I'm waiting. And then you, you enter a new week, oh Lord, you might come this week, I don't know, I am waiting. You enter a new month, oh Lord, you might come this month, I don't know, I'm waiting. You enter into a new year, I don't know, you might come this year, I am waiting. When you have that waiting spirit, anything that comes to say no, I don't want to be disqualified. This temptation is coming, I don't want to be disqualified. Why don't you 
get involved in fraud and take this million of uh, naira or pounds or cities or whatever. You say, no, I cannot say that because I'm waiting for the coming of the Lord. It is the people that have that attitude of waiting. And you say, I can't touch that. I can't do that. I can't go there. I can't wear, I can't, you know, get involved in that thing because the Lord is coming anytime from now. Those are the people having the waiting spirit and you will not be disappointed on the final day in Jesus' name. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. I'm looking at chapter 4, verse 15. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15. It tells us over here in verse 15. It says, For the for, for this will say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. But the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise forth. Then we which are alive, I pray you'll be there. I said you'll be there and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be of the Lord. You'll be there in Jesus name. You know, it's just like Enoch that walked with God all those 300 years. She was, he wasn't rising and falling, you know, today up and tomorrow down, today on the mountain top and tomorrow in the valley. Just consistent Christian living, consistent righteousness, consistent holiness, consistent purity of heart and life. And what we don't know about his wife. We don't know about the children. We don't know whether they were walking the truth or not. But he determined and decided, whatever my wife does, I'm going to follow the law. Whatever my neighbors do, I'm going to follow the Lord, tell my children, do you? I'm going to follow after the Lord. And consistently for those 300 years, he kept on following the Lord. Not that I cannot be a Christian. I wanted to be consecrated, converted, committed to the Lord. I wanted to be a person that is consistent. But you know, the people around me will not allow me. He said, no, whatever they do, that doesn't matter to me. Others may, I cannot, I will not. I must follow the Lord. And those are the people that are men of conviction, women of conviction that will say, no, you can do whatever you want to do. I am going to follow the Lord to the very end. Those are the people that are going to make it at the rapture. You'll be there in Jesus' name. I said you'll be there in Jesus' name. Look at the life of that man. Genesis chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 22. Genesis chapter 5. And I'm looking at here from verse 22. Genesis chapter 5. Verse 22. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years. And he begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. And Enoch walked. Enoch walked. Enoch walked with God. And he was not for God took him. Him. He was not for God took him. You know, he remained in that righteousness and holiness. He didn't say, well, look at this, my children. Don't allow children to disturb you or to hinder you from making it. If, uh, what if uh, you allow them to disturb you or to derail you or to distract your attention? That means they will not make it, you will not make it. I think if we're five, uh, you know, father and mother and three children, if the children decide they don't want to make it, what if uh, you know, you just continue with the Lord so that it's not the five of you that will live and that will miss that heaven i pray you'll not miss it in jesus name when you make up your mind that whatever others do wherever others go whatever others eat whatever others drink however other people behave you're making up your mind that forever and ever as long as god gives you breath and you have this bible you have the word of god there'll be no spirit of compromise in your life but consistently saved consistently sanctified consistently purified consistently made holy that is what the Lord is looking for. And I pray it will happen in your life in Jesus' name. That Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, all the days of the week, every week of the month, you say, this is what I'm going to do. Living one day at a time in righteousness and holiness and a sanctified life. Every day of your life, if it was possible for Enoch so far away in that generation, I believe it is possible today. Now Jesus has died. Now the blood of Jesus has been shed. Now he purges and purifies and it can make us holy and make us clean. And if he did it for Enoch at that time, it will do it for you in Jesus' name. Give me a good amen. amen. 
And that's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, you look at this, uh, the New Testament comment concerning this uh, man, you know, Hebrews chapter 11, we're talking about this in verse 5. It says, by faith, it was, uh, by faith, Enoch was translated, a translatable church. A rapturable church, a church that is living today, living a righteousness consistently. And you want to be ready for that time Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. But before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Why did he live like that? Because he knew that judgment was coming. Look at what he said in Jude. Jude, I'm reading there from verse 14. Jude, verse 14. It says, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these saints, behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of, of his saints. And it says to execute judgment upon all, execute judgment upon all, that, uh, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. He knew judgment was coming, and because he knew the judgment was coming. He said, I'm going to escape that judgment. I'll not be under the wrath of God. And when the Lord comes to judge the people of the earth, I'll be holy. I'll be righteous. And because I don't know when it will come, every day, every week, every month, every year of those 300 years, he lived a victorious life. A life above reproach. And that's the life you are going to live. I said, that's the life you are going to live. And that's the reason why Enoch lived a translatable life. And then the church, every member of the church, believing that the Lord is coming, every member of the church applying the blood of Jesus every time and every moment, were able to live that rapturable life, holy life, sanctified life, and a purified life. We're looking at First John chapter 3, verse 1. First John chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Behold, what manner of, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not. I, the, the world does not know us. They are not going to recommend us. They might say some bad things about you, slander you, tell lies against you. They don't know who we are. And they misunderstand our holiness. They don't know who we are. They misunderstand our kind of uh, transparent life. They don't know who we are. They misunderstand even our messages. They don't know who we are. But that should not bother because it says over here, therefore the world knoweth us not because he knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we shall, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is, and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. The purity you are looking for is not the purity of David that is, you know, once there, but not always there, not the purity of Solomon that has, appears to be wise, but then he wasn't wise unto salvation, he wasn't wise unto separation, he wasn't wise unto sanctification, he wasn't wise in living a purified life. But you are looking for that purity of Christ and the sanctification in Christ and the holiness of Christ and the righteousness of Christ. Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Look at verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this cause, the, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God, thank God, I'm born of God. I said, thank God, I am born of God. I said, thank God, I am born of God. Tell me your, tell me about yourself. Tell me again. It says, if you say you are born again, you are born of God. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Second Peter chapter 3. Translatable church. Consecrated members. You have committed your life to the Lord. You say, I'm going to live this life. Sanctified, holy, purified all the days of my life. Second Peter chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 9. The Lord is not slack. Concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is not suffering towards what? Not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. 
in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the walls that are therein shall be burnt up, seeing that seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of men, what manner of persons, what manner of women ought she to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. All these things, whether they are money or their property or whatever, they will be burnt up in that fire, and the enemy shall melt away with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that she look for such things, be diligent that she may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. That's the kind of church that will be raptured, translatable church, and I pray that will be part of that church in Jesus' name so that in your life there's that salvation secured. In your life there's that separation that is confirmed. In your life there's that sanctification and holiness that is present there every time, all the days of your life until the Lord will come. I pray that that permanent thing, that consistent, that steadfast stand for the Lord, the Lord will give it to every one of us in Jesus' name. And then you'll not be like a careless a fellow, a careless Christian, a careless a church member. They're just coming and going, coming and going, and then we cannot see the change. There'll be a definite change, a remarkable change, transformation in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. I'm coming to number three now, conquering ministers in a triumphant church. If the ministers are weak, the members will be weak. If the ministers, if they cannot stand, there's no conviction. And there's no stability in the heart of the ministers. The church is not going to be stable. Show me some unstable ministers and their members in the church will be unstable. Show me ministers that are weak and not triumphant, that themselves they are falling and rising. And they are not above, they are not living above. But show me ministers that are, you know, messing up with ladies in the church. And the, the members of the church will know that. They will say, well, if the pastor does not have victory, how can I have victory? And if the pastor cannot live, above board how can i live above board if the pastor in the church cannot live it like that is transparent and holy and pure and sanctified and real how can i do it because the stage of the minister determines the stage of the church that's why we're going to have a triumphant church a militant church an overcoming church a church that is standing standing on the word of god every pastor every leader every worker every minister in that church should be able to stand on the word of God. Point number three, then conquering ministers in a triumphant church. Look at the first church, the early church, and see the comment of the world concerning them. I'm looking at Acts chapter 17. I'm looking at the latter part of verse 6. Acts chapter 17, the latter part of verse 6. If you look at the last sentence there, it says, these that have turned the world upside down are come either also. Those were the militant ministers. And those were the ministers of the early church. They turned the world upside down. They were strong in their hearts. They were men and women of conviction. They were apostles of conviction. And not people that didn't have any backbone. They couldn't stand any kind of threats, any kind of persecution coming from the Pharisees. Then they'll be cringing. No, not at all. Those were the people that had a backbone. And they planted their feet on the rock of ages. And all the things that blew against them, persecution and pressure, everything they were able to stand and if the church is going to be triumphant today our ministers must stand we must be conquering ministers to produce and to have a triumphant church look at chapter 4 of acts of the apostles acts of the apostles i'm reading from chapter 4 and i'm looking at it from verse 9 it says in verse 9 if we uh, let, let me back up to verse uh, let me back up to verse 7 it says and when they have set them in the midst they ask by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost 
and said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined by uh, of the of the good deeds done to this impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you, unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom we crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of your builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there any sal salvation in any other, for there is none other name given under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. That's boldness. That's bold, righteous boldness that Peter manifested. That's what the Lord is calling us to, those of us who are ministers. But you know, if you are kind of a money lover, and then you are kind of befriending the people that are rich in your congregation, and then when something goes wrong with their lives, you cannot talk because they're giving you that extra money, that extra pay, and they need you to, they make you to be on their pay list. Apart from all the benefits you're having in your ministry in the church, you're still depending upon them. You cannot talk. You're not be bold. And if you are a servant of those religious people and because this retreat is going all over in deeper life, I want to say that deeper life is not subservient to Christian Association of Nigeria. Deeper life is not subservient to the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. We stand on the totality of the Word of God. And don't you ever think that we're under the control of kind of PFN. We're under the control of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when anything goes wrong in all that, all the churches or whatever, we take our stand and we say, this is what the Word of the Lord says. And so we don't want any of us you know, uh, going to that place. I want to be an officer there. I need to compromise a little and change this a little so I can have an office in Cannes. I can have an office in PFN. We stand on the watch of God. Once we begin to lobby for position, lobby for recognition, and lobby for this and that, we'll not be able to stand on the watch of God and will not be able to have a triumphant church. But this church will be a triumphant church in Jesus' name. Give a good amen. And, and the members can help us. The members can help us. When you see that your minister is becoming a cringy minister, a money-loving minister, a covetous preacher, a, a covetous minister, when you see that your minister is, you know, is a kind of a, having a secret affair with any woman in the church, well, I will not talk. They will not hear from me. The church will not be triumphant. You know the truth and you know what they are doing. And you will never talk about it. You will speak out. Don't try to anonymous let us write your name there. I am the one saying this about this minister is compromising. It's not living according to the word of God. I will call the fellow and will tell him that this is what your members have written, that you are not living right, and then we're able to do the right thing without any partiality. That is what is going to make the church a triumphant church. And I pray that until Jesus comes, whether short or long time, I pray that this church will remain militant and triumphant in the truth in Jesus' name. I thought you'll give me an amen there. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. I'm reading to you there from verse 28. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 verse 28 saying, Did we not strictly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to be God rather than men. They accused them. You filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. They thought that would make them afraid. You know, we have authority to persecute you and to even kill you if we want to kill you. And because we have an opportunity and we have the authority to destroy you and to oppress your life, don't you shut, we must shut up. And it says, they said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Those are the militant believers some militant apostles, some militant ministers that can keep the church triumphant. The people that are not looking for anything. You're not looking for name. You're not looking for reputation. You're not looking
looking for exaltation. You are not looking for, you know, the popularity that comes in the world. Don't lobby for anything. Just, I just want to do the will of God and preach the word of God. It is such conquering minister. It's such an uncompromising minister that will be able to keep the church triumphant. And I'm praying that all our workers will be like that. I said all our workers will be like that. And then all our ministers too will be like that in Jesus' name. And that's why we're told in Acts of the Apostles chapter 20, if we're going to be like that, here is the calling that the Lord is giving us. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20, I'm reading there from verse 28. Acts chapter 20 verse 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves. This address to ministers and to preachers and to workers and to leaders in the church that is going to be a transformed church a translatable church and a triumphant church. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Feed us with the truth. Feed us with righteous messages. Not all these uh, kind of messages just to make us feel happy and make us feel excited and then just make us to clap for you at the end of the message. Give us the bread of life that will change our lives, that will transform our lives, and then we will know you are a committed and you are a consecrated and you are a conquering minister, raising up a triumphant church. In Jeremiah chapter 3, look at the kind of pastors the Lord said they will give us and if your pastor is not like this let us know about it the ministers and the pastors that preach the word of God and feed us with the word of truth those are the pastors the Lord has promised us if we don't have that kind of pastor in any of our branches let's know about it so we can give you a minister a pastor not somebody who is like you know wanting to befriend everybody gather the people around mobilize and motivate and make people laugh and all that our people are not that the people that stand on the word of God, on the unchanging word of God, that are not going to compromise because they want, you know, the money bags in that place, you know, to feed them or to do something for them. I'm looking at Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's the kind of pastor that will be able to raise up a rapturable church. A translatable church, a triumphant church, a transformed church, pastors that feed. They feed the people with the totality of the word of God. And I pray that I will remain like that. I said I pray I will remain like that. And all our pastors, our leaders, if we're going to have this church remain strong, remain firm, remain militant, that is what the Lord is calling us to. That we will feed the people with the word of God. God. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. I'm reading there from verse 18. The kind of church Christ is building and the kind of church he promised. Look at Matthew chapter 16 and we're reading there from verse 18. It says, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Give me a good amen. Amen. And that's why they went out and see how they did it in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, I'm reading there from verse 20. Mark chapter 16, we're looking at verse 20. And they went forth and they preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them. If you are preaching false doctrine, the Lord will not walk with you. If you are kind of hiding the truth from the people, the Lord will not walk with you. But ministers will speak the word of God without fear and without favor. It says the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Is there an amen there? First Timothy, First Timothy chapter 4, in First Timothy chapter 4 verse 15 and 16. It says meditate. Upon this is give thyself wholly unto them, that thy profiting may appear unto all. He's talking to Timothy, he's talking to the ministers that to meditate upon the word of God you are hearing. And you give yourself completely, abandon yourself completely to the word of God. Read the word, meditate on the word, search the word, apply the word to your own life. And then go forth and declare that word without fear, without favor. It says in verse 16, take heed unto thy Self and unto the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Look at chapter 5. I'm looking at chapter 5, verse 20. 
First Timothy chapter 5 verse 20. This is a part of the work of the minister. The ministry of the minister. It says in verse 20, Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. That means then you have the same standard for everyone. If anyone in the church, if, you know, something goes wrong, you correct them. Not that you are so much afraid, well, so and so is so important, and so and so is so indispensable, so and so is untouchable, so and so has this position, so and so has this and has that. And then the whole church is collapsing. And the holiness we're talking about, that Jesus, that the word of God said, without holiness no man shall see the Lord. Everything is going down the drain because there are some indispensable, untouchable people there. But it says that to do everything without partiality. And then that sin, you rebuke, you correct. And the correction is to bring them back to the very center of a holy life. And I pray that that courage of a committed leader, committed minister, the Lord will bring to all the ministers once again in Jesus' name. There should be no minister in our in our midst. There should be no minister that she's sugar daddy, 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 switch daddy, sugar daddy, and never it doesn't have backbone. Cannot rebuke sin. Cannot say this is the right way. What he in it, and everything becomes just a kind of a, a fellowship that has no standard. We're going to maintain the standard in Jesus' name, and it is when the ministers are courageous and they are ministers of conviction that they can stand of the watch of God and there's nobody that is you know untouchable indispensable and in the you know we can't talk about that person that person because if you do the whole church or scatter that's not a church that's not a church if that church is going to scatter let it scatter and let the people that want to go to heaven let them remain it's not the multitude it's not the thousands and the millions it's the people that say I want to get to heaven I want to help other people to get to heaven also that is the church Christ is building and we're going to be part of that church in Jesus name I said we'll be part of that church in Jesus name let's say for example a pastor commits adultery or commits a you know immorality or steals church money and then we say pastor come on here stay aside and then some people they, they come up they say if the partner pastor yes we know that he committed this he committed that if that pastor is not brought back here we're not going to remain in the church you can go you can leave and then the rest of us that want to get to heaven will remain where the church abide where the truth is you came into the church because we preach the truth and if you're coming in into the church will make us abandon the truth it's better you go so that we can remain a triumphant church a rapturable church a translatable church that's what we're going to remain in jesus name give me a good good amen that's, what, that's why the Lord is saying that if we're going to remain a church like that, all our ministers, all our members, there must be conversion, there must be consecration, there must be that concurrent spirit in everyone. And the Lord has promised to us is going to do that, and we're going to remain in the word of God in Jesus' name. And now we're going to read again what Jesus Christ said, and you want to make up your mind, you'll be part of that church. I will be part of that church. I said I'll be part of that church. I said I'll be part of that church. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. I'm reading there from verse 24. Matthew chapter 7. We're looking at it from verse 24. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 24, that's what it says. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended. And the flood came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Upon a rock, the rock of ages. And this church is built on that rock. Whatever persecutions come, we're going to stand. Whatever trials come, we're going to stand. You know, since we started this deeper life, 1973 until now, some have gone, some have left. Some have said, that's too much for me. Some workers, some pastors, some of us, yes, they left. But thank God, thank God, they're living. They don't make Jesus absent. Jesus is still here. 
The Holy Ghost is still here. The power of the Lord is still here. We found some people that said, no, I cannot have that again. I want to go and establish that. And every one of them that have gone like that, not standing upon the truth of the word of God, that has not changed to us. Whether people come or people go, we want to remain on this rock of ages. And we're going to remain in Jesus' name. I've seen the winds blow. I've seen the storms rise. I've seen the waves beating against this house. But thank God because it was built upon the rock, it is still standing. And don't you think that at this old age, I'm going to now kind of, uh, you know, slow down and say, well, you know, difficult situation and difficult, you know, people, I cannot lead again, of course, until I drop dead, until Jesus comes. I'm going to, I'm going to remain in the same conviction in Jesus' name. And the same God helping me. The same God will help you in Jesus' name. That's everything we've heard. We stand upon it. And then whatever comes and whatever goes, we're going to stand until the end. But then it says in verse 26, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, just came to retreat. Just came to hear. They have itching ears. They have all these teachers motivating, mobilizing them, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto, unto a foolish man. I will not be a foolish man. I will not be a foolish minister. I will not be a foolish pastor. I will not be a foolish leader. You will not be a foolish person in Jesus' name. But the people that hear these things of mine, and doeth them not, I liken them to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Your church will not fall. I said your church will not fall, but takes a standing minister to make the church stand. It takes a righteous minister to make the church righteous. It takes a bold minister to make the church bold. And it takes a person that doesn't want money, doesn't love money, doesn't love position, to make a church rapturable and translatable. And that's the kind of church we are going to be in Jesus' name. If you're still part of that church, will you rise up and commit yourself to the Lord? That, Lord, I'm going to be part of this church that is rapturable, part of this church that is seeking for heaven, part of this church that wants this holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, part of this church that whatever is happening, whatever is not happening, I'm going to stand and keep on standing until the very end. I want you to rise up and open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Militant overcomers, the people that overcome sin, the people that overcome self, and the people that overcome Satan, and they want to stand until that final day. And whatever actions people have, and whatever reactions people manifest, they want to stand. They want to stand on the watch of God until the end of their lives. They want to say, oh Lord, I'm not here to defend a person that is going wrong. I'm not here to defend a person that is, you know, committing adultery in the private it. I'm not here to protect anyone that is compromising the truth of the word of God. I am here so that I can stand on the watch of God. And I want, oh Lord, for you to confirm the salvation you have given me and the sanctification and the separation from the world so that, Lord, I'll be able to stand without being shaken by anyone, by anybody's action. Oh Lord, help me that I'll be a righteous member of the church, a stable member of the church, a, a, a sanctified member of the church, a rapturable member member of the church, not somebody that will want the pastors and the preachers to be fearful and to be timid and to, and to compromise. We want ministers encouraged to be able to stand on righteousness and then when things go wrong to be able to have the boldness to be able to say, this church will stand on this rock built and planted on the rock of ages. Open your minds and talk to the Lord because your strength will make the church strong. Your conviction will make the church a church of conviction. And your righteousness will make the church a righteous church. And your stability will make the church a stable church. When you give yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, we're going to stand. Lord, we're going to stand. Lord, we're going to stand. Stand on the word. And stand on the truth. No compromise. No compromise. No deception. No watering down of the messages of the word of God. Tell the Lord, oh Lord, make me. 
a real member of the church, militant member of the church, righteous member of the church, holy saintly member of the church, sanctified separated member of the church, a member of the church having I mean, conviction, a member of the church that is standing on the truth of the word of God, conquering, conquering sin, conquering self, conquering all the pollutions of society, and conquering Satan too. Tell the Lord, be an overcomer. Be an overcomer. Be an overcomer. Righteous. That's how the church is going to be righteous. Sanctified. That's how the church is going to remain sanctified. Pure. That's how the church is going to remain pure. No compromise. But standing on the truth of the word of God. You are not defending backsliders. If you are part of a militant church, a triumphant church, a translatable church. You are not protecting evil doers. Backsliders. You are not protecting them, preserving them. But you want to stand on that word. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. You will stand. You will stand. The victory we're talking about is victory over sin. The victory we're talking about is victory over self. Over temptation, over the, over those trials, victory in the time of persecution. So you are not giving up at the time of persecution, at the time of pressure. You are still saying, Oh Lord, I'm going to stand by everything you have taught me as a member of the church, as a minister in the church, as a worker in the church. That you want to preserve this holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You are committing yourself to the Lord and you are saying, Oh Lord, make me stand. When the winds blow, when the floods come, when compromise is knocking at the door, help me, Lord, to stand. Commit yourself to the Lord as we go into the new year. You go to the new year with holiness. Go to the new year with sanctification. Go to the new year with courage, courage to stand. As you go into the new year, you go to the new year with faith in the word of God, steadfastness in the word of God, holding on to the truth until he comes. When he comes, money will not matter. When it comes, how many children you have will not matter. When it comes, property will not matter. When it comes, there's only one thing, just one thing that will matter on the final day. That holiness of heart without which no man shall say the Lord. Stand therefore on that truth, on that word, and preserve, and preserve that indispensable experience. Don't just have church, assembly, living in carelessness and sin. Stand for the truth. Make sure that in your private life, that righteousness is there, that holiness is there. Your public life too. That righteousness is there. And be a militant overcomer. A militant overcomer in a triumphant church. Triumphant. Triumphant. Not trembling. Not fearful. Afraid of this. Afraid of that. 
give yourself wholly and fully, completely, unreservedly unto the Lord. That we are going to live this life by His grace. Anywhere, everywhere you find yourself. So that whenever that day will come, that the Lord will take His people home, you will be there. You will be there. You will be there. You will be there. And it takes that holiness that God can see through transparent, present everywhere. So you are not a nominal bench warmer in the church. You are converted, you are consecrated, you are committed, you are continuing in the word obedience to the world until the very end for they that shall endure unto the end the same shall be said for me the lord by your grace we will i will your strength we will i will in the power of the spirit we will I will. The promise and the provision of the word, we will. I will. You're not in Christianity for mundane things of this life, for the superficial things of this life. We're in here because this is the preparation ground for heaven. Make up your mind. Decide. Have the grace of God in your life. Know where you are coming from. Know where you are going. Know why you are here. So the Lord to keep you faithful until the very end. There's still any sin abiding, remaining. Get rid of them. The washed, the cleansed, the purged by the blood of the Lamb. Any carelessness? But sliding, corruption, defilement, still remaining, tell the Lord, cleanse me, Lord, wash me, Lord, purify me, Lord. I must not go out of this place without the power to live an overcoming life. I must not go out of this place. The old nature, the old life, the old peculiar weaknesses, triumphant, translatable, transformed. Let the Lord do it. So you are going out a consecrated believer, a committed believer. So there's no shadow of doubt what you believe. No shadow of doubt where you stand. That you hate sin with a passion. Tell the Lord to give you that concrete spirit, not just superficial excitement.
something deep, something rich, something within your soul, within your spirit. To be a conqueror, more than a conqueror. Overcomers, 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 Victorious, Conquering, Triumphant. In Jesus' name we pray. I said, In Jesus' name we pray. I said, In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to be overcomers. No sin will put her face to the ground anymore in Jesus' name. You'll be a purified, sanctified, holy, saintly member of the church of the living God in Jesus' name. All those weaknesses in your character in the past, the Lord has dealt with them now. They will never come again back to your life in Jesus' name. And when the tempter comes, when the temptress comes again, you'll say, uh-uh, you come too late now because I have something that's all power. I have something called authority. And you cannot get me down anymore. They will not get you down again in Jesus' name. <laughs> what are the overcomers here today? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Overcomers, overcomers. Wave those hands, uh, wave those hands at me and wave the answer back to heaven. By your grace, by your grace, by your grace we will. By your grace I will. Wave the answer back to heaven. That Lord, we're going to stand. Will you stand? I said, will you stand? Keep those hands up. Let me pray for you and put something inside you before you go. You will get it. I'm telling you, everywhere you go, everywhere we march, all those people of the other world, they see you, they are going to run away in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We bless your name. We thank you because you have done something for us in this retreat. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, you put something within us. Oh Lord, we pray. The spirit of the conqueror, you impart to everyone in Jesus' name. We are praying, O oh Lord, with what you have done. No sin will conquer us anymore in Jesus' name. Self, society will not conquer us anymore in Jesus' name. And Satan with all his wiles, and Satan with all his tricks, and Satan with all his manipulations will not conquer any of us anymore in Jesus' name. Make us victorious over sin. Victorious over self and victorious over Satan the rest of our lives in Jesus' name. And Lord, we know that when there's no sin, there'll be no sickness. When there's no sin, there'll be no affliction. When there's no sin, all those sins that oppressed us in the past, all those sins will not be there anymore. We're praying, oh Lord, we'll have total victory, all around victory in our lives in Jesus' name. And I pray that the determination and the discipline and the diligence to keep holy, sanctified, separated from the world all the days of our lives, you grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. And Lord, as we go out as a mighty army, a militant army, we pray, Lord, every place the soul of our foot shall tread upon, you grant unto us in Jesus' name. Make everyone here overcome us. Everyone overcomer. Everyone overcomer. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives, even unto the death. We are praying, O oh Lord, the blood of Jesus will cover everyone. Will co cover all our cars, all our lorries, all our buses, everywhere we go. No evil will befall anyone in Jesus' name. Above all, keep us righteous. Above all, keep us rapturable. 
above all, keep us translatable. Above all, keep us triumphant. He has a church in Jesus' name. Let our members be transformed members. Let our ministers be transformed and triumphant ministers in Jesus' name. Let your power go with us. Let the anointing go with us. Let the authority go with us. And let your word, your doctrine go with us in Jesus' name. And when we see again, if Jesus tarries, we'll come back with loads of testimony. With loads of testimonies. With loads of testimonies. And Lord will be able to tell how you have made us victorious in every area of our lives. Confirm it in every life, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said, Go as a valiant man, a valiant, a valiant woman in the strength of the Lord and keep on conquering in Jesus' name.